My sister at the time was also realizing that she was going to get a divorce. So we were sort of arguing about what was the best timing to tell our parents that like she was going to get a divorce and that I was gay. <laughs> My name's Greg Berlanti and uh, I'm a gay man. I realized I was gay from the time I was probably around 13 years old. Didn't really deal with it. Had a closeted relationship in college and still kind of tried to convince myself maybe it's just the person, maybe I'm not gay. And, and then I moved out to Los Angeles in 1995 and I made some friends, started seeing someone. Everything made sense for the first time. And after a lot of tears and just realization and journaling about it, I realized, okay, I wanna start telling people openly that I'm, I'm gay. And I, I told a few friends and then told my sister, but I was waiting to tell my parents. I just kept not getting an opportunity. So it was almost a, probably a year, year and a half after I started telling people, I realized like, okay, now I've really got to tell them what if they hear from somebody. As it worked out, the only time I was really going to get a chance to tell my parents was they were taking, my dad was taking a business trip to San Francisco of all places. So I flew up there and um, I was really nervous and I went out to dinner with them and I couldn't tell them at the dinner. I just didn't have the wherewithal. I, I was probably 24 now at this point. And so I sort of sweat through dinner and they could tell, they asked me if something was wrong and we went back. They didn't get me like my own hotel room or anything. It was like three of us in one room and me on a cot and uh, in the hotel room. And it was the night of the uh, Olympics uh, when Muhammad Ali ro uh, lit the torch. And uh, I had actually in my lifetime met Muhammad Ali and uh, you felt like you were meeting a spiritual or religious figure. He had such presence and uh, really inspired courage. And so he lit the torch and, and uh, I turned off the television set. And I said, well, I want to tell you guys and, and uh, for a long time I've known I'm gay. And you know, I just one long sort of had one long run on sentence and it wasn't great. It didn't go super well uh, at the time. I think they were both really shocked and surprised. And so they went back to New Jersey where they lived at the time. And I went back to LA for the first couple of months, things were really raw. We didn't talk as much as we, we'd always talked every week. And, and I finally wrote them a letter uh, that said, look, you know, you know, yeah, I'm gay, but I'm also all these other things that you've already known, you know? Um, and my father got the letter and he called me and I could hear that he was, you know, really moved by it. And, uh, and then that was it. And a lot of members of the, my mom's community, you know, people who knew someone who was gay or had gay children, a lot of those people through the years would find her and talk to her about it. And she definitely helped a lot of friends, I think, you know, in terms of just saying, like, your son's still, your daughter, whomever, is still the same person, you know. I'd written a number of scripts when I came to Hollywood, eight or nine of them, and passed them around to friends. And nobody ever really called me about them or passed them on to anybody. And then I had saved up enough money to write sort of one more script. And I ended up writing this thing that became the film The Broken Hearts Club. And it was just about a group of young gay guys. I'd always loved the film Diner. And it really was sort of my ode to those kind of movies, those coming of age stories, but about what it meant to be gay in the late 90s in West Hollywood. And my parents uh, threw a premiere party at a gay bar in New York. And that was really finally when I felt like, okay, now we've gone on the whole We've gone on this whole sort of journey together. They had sort of their coming out process with it all too, and that, that not only were they accepting of me being gay, but they wouldn't have changed it. There were two things about the script for Love, Simon that uh, immediately caught me. One was uh, just the general tone and the warmth and the humanity of it and, uh, and the comedy. But the other, it was filling a void in me that I didn't even really realize that needed to be filled. Uh, that, that a story like this, sort of mainstream kind of coming of age story uh, could also be a gay story. I think because I had the courage to sort of really be, be myself, declare myself to the world and, and figure out who I was, it really was the thing to led, that led to all the other wonderful things in my life. It led to a career and then ultimately it led to you know, marriage and a child. Uh, not in that order. We had the child first and then we got married, but nevertheless, it, felt, it, le it led to falling in love and, and uh, you know, all the things that I thought uh, I would never have really when I was a kid, uh, you know, they all came true. But it, the first step toward all of it was finding my voice and finding my courage to, to say to people, you know, this is who I am. So this is me. I think I'm six or seven years old. And the teeth, my sister uh, had talked me into splitting money from the tooth fairy if I knocked my teeth out. 
So she actually got me <laughs> to lean in front of a front a railing, I'm not kidding, and, and, and bang my two teeth out and so I could split the money with her. So I was a naive child. I would like to tell myself in kindergarten, you know, that uh, to stay open, that like life's gonna figure out a lot of ways to shut you down and, and uh, try and shut down your heart and your exuberance and your light and to not let that happen and that uh, most of the wonderful things that will happen in your life are from being expressive and learning to share your heart with the world.